have a lot of thoughts about this one. Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to be talking about the darkness that comes before by R. Scott Baker. That's right. I have finally gotten to this book. It has uh, been on my, my list of my PBR for literally years at this point, and I finally got to it. It took me a while to get through because I was definitely taking my time. Uh, I feel like taking, taking your time with this is a, a good choice, though. And uh, with finishing it, I have a lot of thoughts, and uh, it's... It's been really interesting finally getting to this. I might have to end up making another video talking about this later, uh, either the first book or maybe once I'm a little bit further, just because I feel like in some ways I'm still processing this. Um, I just finished this yesterday, and so I've contemplated a little bit, but um, uh, probably still have some contemplating to do. So the first thing I will say is I, I really, I really did enjoy this. I ended up giving this four and a half out of five stars. Uh, I had some nitpicks uh, and some things that I just wasn't a huge fan of that were fairly minor that I would say. Uh, but overall, this is the kind of book that at least in certain aspects is extremely to my taste. We'll talk about the, the fact that some aspects, maybe not as much, uh, but um, the general style and what Baker is doing here with the story fits with my taste really, really well. And so we're gonna talk about that. Uh, and I'm, I, I don't know yet if this is gonna be spoiler or not. We're gonna see how long I talk non-spoiler. There's a good chance I end up doing spoilers later if I don't here, but we'll see. Uh, I'll, I'll timestamp if we talk about it. But anyway, uh, so the first thing I wanna talk about is just the, the general style here, because this book, and I can absolutely get why this would be very polarizing is, you're kind of just thrown in. You don't get a lot of explanation. You don't get exposition up front. You don't. You don't really know what's happening. Uh, you just start. You you have the prologue, uh, where some big things are happening. You don't get a lot of explanation as to, to why or the context. You just have to read, and then you just start from there uh, and uh, start going. And so. I know uh, some people really get irritated by that and they're like, hey, I want to know what's happening and it, it makes it really hard for them to get into the book. For me, I think it worked really well because it's uh, it's the kind of story where there's a lot of world building as you go. There's a, you finding out things about the lore as you go. And so for me, I really enjoyed it. It's something that I actually made it feel really engaging to me because uh, I like that sort of storytelling where you're just kind of thrown in uh, and you're learning as you go instead of just like having a big bunch of dumps at the beginning because you could literally you could have hundreds of pages of just lore and in info dumping uh, start this and you still probably wouldn't scratch the surface of where it's going uh, but the way that Baker's doing it is you're finding out things uh, as you go and there's uh, like when I was like probably 70% in or at least like I was I was in the the last chunk uh, by the time I was there, you were finally like getting a lot of context on some stuff that happened in the prologue. And I'm like, oh, that's so interesting. And it's like like finding that tidbits and it's really rewarding. Uh, so it's something that has worked really well for me. However, like I said, I know that's not going to work for everyone uh, because it, it, sometimes you just feel like you really need to know. I have tended to enjoy that though. And although the styles are entirely different, uh, something that, that for me comparable with at least doing something where it's kind of as you go, dropping lore and finding things out is the Collation Saga by Andrew D. Meredith, where very, very different in style and, and subject matter and, and kind of things there. But similarly, you know, he just throws you in. It's very, very fantasy world, a lot of different things, and you just, you, you find out more what's going on. Uh, Baker's even even a little bit more reserved where you're, you're really only getting tidbits. It's He doesn't want you to probably know uh, what's going on right too early. He wants you to wonder and think about it and uh, just be along for the ride. So I think that works really well. With the the plot itself, uh, I, I was I was talking with some people as I was reading this, and for me, I felt the plot was actually pretty strong, although it's debatable whether or not that's 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 objectively true. But I'm going to explain why. Uh, a, I'll note I was uh, reading Empire of Grass at the same time, which I, I'm I'm loving, great book, but it, plot's very meandering here. Uh, in this book, the plot, as much of it is, is really just we're following. Our, our different characters as they are kind of going toward a destination. 
and, and they're all going to different places. Sometimes it's a physical location. Sometimes it's it's more of like a, a they're trying to get somewhere mentally or spiritually in this case, like different things, but they're all kind of heading forward and we're along for the ride. So there's not really strong intricate plots or anything like that, but it also never feels like it's going nowhere for me. Uh, so like an example there would be, you know, you love, love it or hate it, Abercrombie, is, his plot lines often just go nowhere or you get to the end and then he just kind of pulls the rug out and is like, nope, it's happening different. That's not what this is doing. This is just, you're following these characters. They're kind of, they're on their way forward. And so for me, I never felt like the plot was just, you know, like the wheels were just spinning and going nowhere. I always felt like we were moving forward. So it ended up feeling pretty strong for me in that regard as well. And uh, just being such a world building focused reader, when you're constantly dropping these different things and lore and like we're following one character, Nayor, and uh, we just keep learning more about uh, their, the culture of, of he's, he's uh, lives on the steps with these people that are, are like looked at as barbarians uh, by the more civilized people. But then they look at the more civilized people as, as kind of like barbarians or like less than uh, as well. But just getting more bits of lore about their God and their beliefs and the culture. And I'm just, I just so fascinating. Uh, and it brings me to another thing that I, for me, was really interesting, but also is going to be one of those things that could go either way. The amount of names and factions and different things that are thrown at you here, it is a lot to take in. Now, there is a, I'll note, very sparse uh, appendix at the back that goes over the different factions. And the amount of the things that it goes into a lot of depth on uh, are not necessarily the things that you would want. Uh, but there are some maps at the back, I'll note too. But a fun thing is, I'm actually just going to get this out. So the character and faction glossary is one, two, three, four pages. That's it. The thing that's going about languages and dialects, this diagram here, is four, five, six pages, uh, just about languages and dialects. So you can tell that Baker has the things that he's willing to absolutely go into and none of that is talked about in the story for the record for the most part, either with like that level of detail. It's just there if you want it, uh, which I, I think is smart because if you try to get into that level of depth, it's, it's gonna be hard to kind of fit in. But you can see there that he, like I said, it feels intentional that he doesn't necessarily want you to know things. You just have to kind of be along for the ride. Uh, the characters being extremely strong helps with that for sure, which we'll get into. But uh, talking about like the number of uh, just factions, different things going on, because we have uh, we have different countries, we have different leaders, we have the great names, different people in power, and then we have the, the schools, which are like uh, groups of magic users uh, that are, all have different goals, uh, different uh, these different factions, everybody, all kinds of different things, places, names. And we'll say the names extremely hard to pronounce. Uh, I ended up uh, like <laughs> I ended up skimming through parts uh, on audio just to find names and try to figure out how to pronounce them. And I'm still going to probably pronounce a lot of them wrong because uh, but since we're staying mostly spoiler free, I'm probably safe because I'm just like, how on earth do you even say some of this stuff? Uh, so I don't know if the audiobook narrator got it right, but I'm like, I'm just like trolling the audiobook trying to find the how do you how do, how do you say this name? How do you say this name? Um, but uh, it, it's, yeah, the names are a bit much. They are very, like, old school fantasy, very difficult to say. There are many of them uh, that are like that. I will absolutely uh, give that. But just kind of the the depth uh, with the world building, for me, uh, I found that really intriguing. If you're the kind of person who just wants things more, a little more clear cut, you're probably going to have a bad time with this uh, because you, you just don't really get that. But uh, for me, it just... Uh, all of that extra stuff. And it's me trusting too that like I, you know, I'm okay not knowing things up front. Uh, I'm very much okay to see like I'm, I'm sure that the important things will come up or be explained more. And I, for the most part, that was very true with this book where things that were really relevant uh, or that were important were there were callbacks later where we're, we're getting more context. We're finding out more. We're seeing more of, of these people and actions, but it's more so it's just happening. Um, and the, the big thing that's happening here is that the, a holy war is, is being started. And there, once again, there are a lot of different factions who have a lot of different thoughts, goals, uh, ideologies, uh, as far as the holy war, but that's kind of how our characters are all coming together. 
and we're, we're following a character who, like I said, is, is kind of a barbarian. We're following a, a character who is a kind of old and tired priest who feels broken. We're following uh, a prostitute who's, you know, looking to make changes in her life. And uh, we're also uh, following somewhat a, uh, a very mysterious character who's also uh, some sort of, of monk uh, of, of mystery, I will say. Um, <laughs> so there's, there's a lot of, a lot of different things going there as well, but we're looking at a lot of different things happening. Uh, and it's, uh, it, it's a lot to keep track of for sure. And there were points where I had to like flip back and remind myself who's who, what's what, that sort of thing. Uh, so you have to be okay with that. But the characters also, I think for the most part, were particularly strong because Naor, uh, is, is the, the barbarian type character and, uh, him talking and especially, uh, I, I'm, as as an as uh, Kelhus. I'm probably really really badly mispronouncing that, so you can yell at me in the comments. Feel free. Uh, but just Naor and Kelhus, like every time that they're together and interacting, I just so many great lines, so many great things, and I just uh, really really enjoyed. Uh, we have uh, Esmenet, who is a compelling character in different ways. Uh, which I'm going to talk about that a little bit uh, afterwards as well, because that's also another thing I think some people may have some issue with, but that I'm seeing a little bit differently. Uh, and uh, Aka, or uh, who is that? That's his nickname, and is Drusus Akamian. Uh, that one seems a little more easy to pronounce. Uh, and uh, him, and just kind of his. The more you find out about him, too, the more I feel like compelling he is because he's a character of many contrasts. But so once again, it's these characters are very strong. And so I'm very invested to see what they're going to do. And even if the, the things happening around them are just maybe traveling, there never feels to be a dull moment for me, which is why, despite the fact that there's not a ton of plot here, it felt like everything was moving, uh, even with the length of this book. And I never felt like uh, this we're just we're just wasting time. So uh, I, I feel like it worked really well for me. I would describe this as a very uh, character-focused book uh, with quite a lot of world-building uh, focus as well, I would say. Definitely not a, a plot-driven book by any means, uh, but you kind of have, you know, at the, at the absolute, you know, most outside of the high level you have some objectives and you have all these people that are, are one way or another they're trying to get to that objective so it still feels like you know we're, we're pointed in a direction uh so i think that works now i mentioned asminette who is uh is a prostitute and uh is one of the things i think too and as i was i was read a bunch of reviews for this afterwards after i finished which i, I like to do sometimes especially when it's a book that i know is polarizing and seeing the people who love this, who hate it, and uh, the the treatment of women is one of the reasons why. And uh, yeah, it's it's definitely not good. And uh, it's a lot of it is set up within the cultures. Um, and I think though, for me, especially because of the fact that we're very pointedly following a character who is a prostitute and who is having uh, some of this treatment uh, themselves, uh, where it's going on with these different things, and. Uh, the way that they're sort of treated throughout, and to me, it felt more like, look at this. This is this is kind of a normal thing that you see in fantasy, in real life, in whatever you want to say, and uh, making you think about it because it's uh, the the treatment of women is is not historically been great in fantasy or in much of you know our actual history as well, and so it's. It's easy to say to, to go there and be like, oh, this is the author specifically treating women horribly uh, versus to kind of look. And I feel like it's something that you get with um, with Erickson as well, because granted, there are some characters and scenes there where I'm just like, I don't feel that this was probably necessary or, or really you know, get there. But reading there was there's a lot of that, too, where, you know, uh, the the intent is not more so just to to put women in these terrible conditions or be like, oh, you know, to revel in it, but to kind of try to spotlight and, and take a look at it and point it out. I got more of that feeling from this uh, than I, I did just that this is, you know, this is just the way it is. So that's at least me personally. That's kind of the way that it came off. And so uh, I didn't I didn't feel that it, that was something that was uh, just terrible. Now, I will say as far as maybe I should have said this toward the beginning, but uh, I thought like I said I had too many thoughts about this. So this is probably a slightly rambly video and I apologize. You can feel free also to yell at me in the comments about this being too long. All right, I know people like to really uh, to keep an eye on my uh, review lengths and let me know if they feel they're too long. 
but um, this one is as far as like the darkness level, because that's the big thing. As I've heard that like R. Scott Baker is like the darkest of the dark, uh, and I, I didn't really get that here. Now I will preface that with. My understanding is things are definitely going to get a lot darker, and uh, the bleakness is definitely here. Uh, pretty bleak. Uh, there's not. This isn't a story where there are really like heroes. Uh, the characters don't necessarily feel like villains either. It's not. There's no black and white good and evil. Even one of the main characters, who the the organization that they're a part of, is uh, absolutely dedicated to fighting something that they see as absolute evil. But there's so many different variants here. And so it's just, it feels like it's it, it absolutely within the shades of gray. There are darker things that happen here. Uh, and it is fairly bleak. But as far as like, you know, that sort of thing, like there's nothing here that's like just so crazy, disturbing or dark. At least yet, I will say. Like I said, my understanding is things do escalate uh, over time. Uh, but I mean, this is, I, I considering all of the grimdark stuff and all of the, the sometimes super over the top things that I've seen or like the really big focus on some of those negative things. Um, this didn't feel like it was particularly extreme to me. Uh, although it is bleak. It's also, like I said, despite being bleak, it's just very compelling. A lot of that's because of the characters. Uh, so I, uh, I found myself very engrossed, very pulled into this. And, um, I didn't feel like this was like really, really getting me with the, the overly dark thing. Um, so a couple of, of my, my actual critiques, because a, you do definitely get like 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 I've I've commented beating around the bush a little bit. I feel like you can get my point. Uh, so the sexual content here, it's something I'm not a huge fan of. But like I said, I feel like was not honestly uh, over the top here. Uh, it did not. Uh, it, it didn't go to the level of some other things I've read where it just felt cringeworthy or awkward or just revolting to read. Um, oh, there's definitely some stuff that's you know not my favorite, but uh, it's there. You're, you're definitely going to find it. There's going to be more of it, I'm sure. Uh, but it was not not even close to a deal breaker uh, to me either. And like I said, seems to serve a purpose because uh, the, the idea too of... Uh, there, there's a lot of talk, especially from one character, about things being either manly or unmanly and that kind of thing. And the, the exploration of masculinity feels very intentional here uh, as well uh, in this book. So that that's just something I will note, that it, it never felt gratuitous or that we're revelling in any of this kind of stuff. Uh, we're just kind of exploring some of these archetypes. Um, otherwise, my, my biggest nitpick is the overuse of the word peach or peaches or whatever to be used in exactly the way that you think it is after, after that segue uh, a lot. It annoyed me a lot, and it's one of those things. It's nowhere near as bad as like Donaldson with overusing words. Uh, and I've still, you know, really enjoyed his stuff. There, there's some other authors like Martin that I feel like are terrible about overusing certain words as well. Uh, and yeah, Jordan did it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, so that that was used more than I would have liked uh, for sure. And then uh, I, the first chapter, the first chapter, I was not a huge fan of. It felt tonally different than the rest of the book. And uh, the prologue, thankfully, was excellent. And then uh, I, after the first chapter, I really didn't have a lot of complaints there. But so those are those are kind of my minor complaints here uh, with it as well. Now, I will note the big thing that I've not gotten into is there's a lot of philosophy talk and philosophical discussion here. That's something that I just feel like would take way more time than this has already been to talk through. So I've not really dug in. Uh, but I think if you are, if you're looking for that sort of thing, there's a lot here as well. And I think that's going to really, really continue uh, the idea of the darkness that comes before and some of the other philosophical ideas that are discussed here uh, are, are done a fair amount. And once again, never really feels like we're going over the top with it or we're stopping to do it. So I, I think it fit really well with the pacing overall. Uh, but it's just another interesting facet of this uh uh, this book and I imagine will be of the series. Uh, I, I know this has already been a really long with you, so I'm going to at this point wrap up. But I did start off saying I had a lot of thoughts on this, and that's very true. I'm very intrigued by this series to continue. I, I definitely want to talk more about this, I think, as well. And um, I'll be curious to, to go and uh, start watching some other people's videos uh, that have talked about this at length as well, as well as continue talking to uh, some people I know that have read it, because a lot of, lot of really interesting stuff here, and uh, I, I feel like my opinions are going to get more complex as we go, but uh, we'll, we'll see. I do hope to continue this series very soon, uh, at least get through the first trilogy timely and then move on to the next one at some point 
that'll definitely be next year. I don't know. I'll get to these. But anyway, so let me know your thoughts on anything that I said. Do you completely agree, disagree uh, with, with everything, anything? Uh, I'd be curious because I know this is a polarizing book. A lot of you have been curious, I know, to see how I would feel. So there you go. There's an extra long video of, of you seeing how I feel about it. But um, yeah, it was uh, very intriguing, uh, a very absorbing read for me, and I'm, uh, I'm very interested to, to continue. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. Uh, make sure to give the video a like if you enjoyed it. Check the links in the description, as always, for uh, the Patreon if you want to support what I do, as well as the Wizard of the Enclave Discord if you want to chat books, whether this book, other books, really anything at all. It's a lot of fun, and we'd love to have you. And, of course, if you enjoy my content, make sure to subscribe.